welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I am glad you're here. So I'm just going to get right started right away. I'm going to tell you about what I'm wearing and I have a twirl of this that we'll put at the end. But this is a tank top from, whoops, things are falling. The pattern came from the Magic Pattern book. I can't remember where I heard about this. I kind of feel like I read about it on a blog and the gal had made this exact version and I thought it looked real cute on her. She was a plus size gal um, and I just thought it looked really cute on her and so I went on to Amazon and I bought this and I love this book. Now, a lot of this falls underneath my size range. So for instance, if I was gonna make a skirt out of here, I would have to grade up the waistband but let me tell you the concept of this book because it's really cool. There's these six patterns or six pattern categories. The first five, it really is um, patterns. And then they are manipulated. So number one pattern is the tank top. And that's what I made here. Now, so you're like, okay, that's cool, whatever. I can find a tank top pattern anywhere. But What's cool about it is, so this tank top, the tank top is Magic Pattern A, okay? And you can see the little model here. She's wearing the same one I am, okay? And then this is where it gets cool. You have your patterns and then you make these little adjustments. So what this pattern, what this tank top pattern gives you is four tops, which all look quite different, I think. They do not like, look like they came from the same pattern, and two dresses. And I just love that idea. So if you decide you're gonna make this one, like the Alice pattern, so you go to that section, it tells you exactly what pattern pieces to um, print out, and then if it's one that is going to be manipulated, it tells you exactly where to draw. Um, what to add on and it looks pretty simple and you guys I'm not good with math and like designing and drafting and all of that it isn't not only am I not good at it I'm not really interested in it to tell you the truth but the way this book does it it's all so simple that I really feel like um, like I could do it and that this would be a great introduction to pattern manipulation so then the other cool thing that I, not only do you get six patterns for each base piece, at the end of every chapter, it gives you a whole lineup of fabrics that would be cool in that pattern. So all these different ones would be good. So you're getting a really good idea of weights and you know print scale and all that. So then this is pattern A2. I have the Alice, this is the Avery. So this, the, they've obviously narrowed this a little bit. They've cut off the handkerchief tri, tri, uh, hem, and then they've added an exposed zipper. The bias, um, the bias finish here is on the outside, it's exposed. And they've cut the back in a little bit. And so this is like a completely different I think this is a very unflattering. They should not have put this over a full skirt. This tank top should be over a narrow bottom, in my opinion, because this is all bunched up. And this gal's 5'6", so she's not super tall, but um, I'm pretty sure that she has a better figure than what this shows. So if this had been over a skinny bottom, I think that would have been a much more flattering picture. Most of the pictures in here are good. This is one of the few fails, I think, in the book. So, um, and that's just for the way that they, they styled it. I would not have styled it that way, but you get this whole book and they've done that with all of these pattern pieces. And I got this on Amazon. The U S price is $22 and 95 cents. I'm betting that I paid less than that. However, if I didn't, I think for 36 downloadable patterns on CD, um, I think $23 is well worth it. The book is by Amy Berrickman, and she's the founder of Indigo Junction. 
Um, I do have one of her patterns for a throw that's really cute, like a, a shawly kind of jackety thing. Um, that's the only pattern I have of hers. But anyway, I think that's well worth $23. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to tell you a story and then we're going to get into what the main idea of the video is. A few months ago, I was sitting at my computer in the living room. I have it on my, you know, I was on my laptop and my husband was sitting over there in his chair on his laptop. And I said to him, I've been thinking about opening a fabric store. And he said, okay. And I said, I just am not sure about all the paperwork. I think you have to do things like officially with agencies and whatnot in order to open a store. And he said, okay, what do you want to call it? And I just was like, I don't know, um, Mayfield Fabric and Supply. Maybe we bounced a few names back and forth. And he's like, okay. Well, he went online and he paid for all of the stuff, the securing the name for us, um, the tax ID number, wholesaler's license. Well, I don't even know what all he did. But anyway, it's all done. And Mayfield Fabric and Supply belong to us now. And um, we are in the process of opening um, an online fabric store. And we have the website and we've started to load fabrics onto it. Um, we have a designer working on um, our logo and our branding package. And um, she's from Etsy. I really like her stuff. And so we've engaged her and she's in the process of creating that. Um, all that should be done by the end of June and um, then we'll make our website real pretty. Right now it isn't pretty because um, we don't have our logo yet, but all that is in the works. And so while we were discussing this, my husband said, I think you should make a vintage corner on the website. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, I think that what Troy was thinking would happen with the vintage part of the website would be that I would be pulling my personal stash and selling it on the vintage corner. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, I have a carefully curated selection of vintage fabrics and natural fibers that are in my colors that are just divine that I fully intend to hoard for myself and they're not going on that website. However, since he mentioned that, I thought that is a fantastic idea because I know good fabric when I see it. I know good design, I know good quality, I know the fibers that I like, um, I know whether it's pretty, um, but I don't buy vintage fabrics that, or they don't have to truly be vintage, but just older. They may only be 20 years old or whatever. And I don't know if I would truly call that vintage because I have fabric, beautiful fabrics from the 40s and 50s, which I would definitely call vintage. Um, but I don't buy any fabric that doesn't suit my color palette or that I wouldn't want to sew up. But since Troy mentioned that, I was like, you know, you have a good point. I have seen beautiful vintage fabrics in say red, for example, which I don't like at all. I would never sew with red. It's not a color that I'm comfortable with. I don't really like it. There's none in my house. Like I'm sitting in my living room, which has, it's full of antiques and you know all kinds of gigaws and stuff and there's no red in here and there's no red anywhere in my house um, and I don't wear red it's too energetic for me I'm already a very kind of uptight maybe person and I need soothing colors and so I sew with aqua and I sew with green and I sew with blue and I sew with gray um, and I sew with black but now that we have our website, I am going to be curating vintage and just older fabrics for other people who may not have the time or the desire to go to garage sales, estate sales, vintage stores, thrift stores, all the places that I am willing to go um, and enjoy going. So now you can consider me like your personal buyer because it, it's fun for me to go to these places and root through stuff and come up with beautiful fabrics. So for our very first offering from Mayfield Fabric, I have a stack of fabrics that are not vintage. I would guess that most of these fabrics are between 
15 and 20 years old, but they're beautiful and I think that they would be useful for other people. And so I will eventually be offering much, much older fabrics and I do have some. This just, the stack I'm gonna go over with you today happens to be the stack that was at the top of my vintage pile stack that we're going to list at Mayfield Fabric and Supply. Our website name is Mayfield Fabric and Supply and the address is mayfieldfabric.com. And so that's where you'll be able to find us. And if you go there now, you'll be seeing a website that is under construction. And as you hopefully continue to visit, you'll see it looking better and better and more and more professional. So today, I have five fabrics that I wanted to share with you. This first one is on the website. All of these will be on the website sometime today. And I do wanna say that it is very difficult to photograph purples. And all of our photographs for this fabric that are on our website, and I've made a note of it on the website, they look fuchsia. And this fabric is not fuchsia. This is a berry, it's a winish, a plummy berry fabric. And it's beautiful, it's, a, um, it's polyester, I'm sure. And it's super drapey. I think this would be ideal for a pussy bow blouse. There's three yards of it. I have all the details. So in a video, if I say something, you will want to double check that on the website because there I have measured everything and um, you'll know exactly what you're getting. Um, and so this is a, like a polyester um, satin jacquard. So, one side, I'll show you both sides at the same time. I don't know. I don't generally sew with this fabric, but it is so pretty. I think this side is the right side because on this side, the little boxes are super shiny and the background is a little more matte. And on this side, the whole thing is a little more matte. So it depends on what you're going for. If you don't want that super shine, then you just make this your right side. And so this would be ideal for a pussy bow blouse. It would be ideal for both of my May makes. Um, I made that kimono. Um, I think that was a simplicity pattern. And I made that, um, that tunic that had big sleeves on it. That was a simply sewing pattern. That was called the, was that, that was a cotton and chalk pattern called the holiday set, I think. It would be perfect for that. And I also pulled some more fabrics and, I mean, patterns. And the reason why I want to do this is so that because you can't feel this, you're only looking at it on a website, you can come over to my YouTube channel and you can look at the way the fabric drapes. And you can see what another um, seamstress would pair with it. So this is Simplicity 1461. You could definitely make any of these drapey tunics with that fabric. It would be pretty with any view on this pattern. So that gives you another idea of what I might sew with this fabric. And then, oh, I included this. Huh? This is what I sewed last month. And this is the Cotton, cotton and Chalk, the holiday set. And I made this one last month, but I think either of these views would be absolutely exquisite in this fabric. And this fabric is not sheer. It is not see-through at all. You would not have to wear a tank top or anything. You could wear a white bra under this, you could wear a black bra under it, it would not show um, through. It's very um, densely woven. So I think that would be ideal. Our next fabric, this is crazy fabric. I would not have picked this up if it weren't for the incredible quality of this piece of fabric, okay? So this is a very thick, very high quality Lycra spandex. Um, I don't know what the exact makeup of it is, but it's very thick. I would feel comfortable making leggings out of these and wearing them in public. I do not feel like your underwear would show, provided they weren't, you know, absolutely too tight. But so I have that and the two fabric, the two patterns that I chose, this is Simplicity 8212. It's just a workout legging pattern. Any of these would be perfect. 
I also think that that would be adorable fabric on a little kit. Um, make her some little leggings out of this and then make her a cute little top like what I'm wearing. Adorable. And you would just, I would, if I was doing that, I would just choose one of these solids. Um, and by the way, this is black. So that would be ideal. You could pair this with black and any of these other colors. I don't really like to see little children in black, but if I was using it as a grown up, I would totally um, make a black top to go with this. If I was brave enough to wear those colors, which that's way too bright for me. The other thing, that would make a beautiful swimsuit. So this is the Pinup Girls 2901 Denise swimsuit. I believe that you can also find, um, her name is escaping me, but this gal has some wildly successful craftsy um, classes. I have one or two of her bra making classes. I have her panty making class and I have her swimsuit making class on Craftsy. And um, I cannot remember her name, but she's a fantastic teacher. Um, she's Canadian. Um, I can remember that much about her. This is a Canadian company. Um, and she's an excellent, excellent teacher. She's fun and funny and um, just, she's about my age, maybe a little bit older, I don't know. And um, she's a great teacher. If you wanna learn how to make bras, panties, or swimsuits, I highly recommend um, both her craftsy classes, her patterns, and her website has all of the bra making findings that you would want. So there's that. Our third fabric is one of my two favorites of these five. And it is a brocade and it's beautiful. It is a gorgeous, I would sew with this, but I am not leading a brocade lifestyle right now. I'm a special education teacher in middle school and um, I don't wear brocade to school and I don't lead a fancy life. Like I don't have any nighttime events or anything. Um, here in Pueblo, even if you are going to the theater, I would just wear a nice outfit. Um, it would not, you, you could even wear to the theater here in Pueblo, you could wear jeans and high heels and a really flowy top and jewelry and you know, just put on the makeup and carry a cute bag. You would be able to totally get away with that. Um, it's not a strict dress code here. Um, so brocade, you know, is not really my lifestyle, but I snatched this fabric up because it will be beautiful for someone who does need a fancy dress. I would wear this to a wedding. I would wear this if I was ever the mother of a bride. Well, I would only be mothers of grooms since I don't have any daughters. <laughs> but if my sons were ever to get married, I would totally wear this for, for that. And um, it's incredibly high quality. It's a beautiful fabric. It's just gorgeous. It's a beautiful light peaky, pinky peach. So I'm gonna have to start putting these down there. Let's look at what I would consider for this. I would consider this pattern. It would be a little stiffer. I think this is some kind of a, you know, that might be a brocade. It looks like it could be a lame as well, but I totally think you could pull this dress off. Um, here's the back view a little bit shorter. It's called the Esme and they recommend light to medium weight woven fabric such as cotton chambray, jacquard, and brocade. So I think that would be fabulous in this. Now one thing to keep in mind when I'm doing these videos because I'm going to keep these coming. I'm going to keep these coming about once a week for as long as I have vintage fabric to show you. Um, if I ever hit a dry spell where I don't have any I won't have them. But um, when I'm doing these videos, I'm not gonna necessarily always, I'm not guaranteeing that there's enough yardage to make this dress. My pattern pairings are to show you a better example of what the weight would be. When you go to the website, that's where you will see exactly how much yardage I have. And then you can compare that to your patterns. If you ever have a specific question, like you can say, Carla, I really want to make the Esme dress, but I haven't bought the pattern yet. Would you please check and see, you know, if there's enough? And I will totally do that for you. And maybe I'll make a point of doing that in the future, but I didn't for this video. 
So then the other one, and I think this is a does I think this is a fabric and pattern match perfection, is the cashmere at Upton dress. Okay, the fabrics they're they're asking for woven fabric um, such as cotton, linen, double gauze, or upholstery fabric. So that fabric is a you know it's it could be upholstery weight fabric, and then this is a lined dress. So I think that this. Um, fabric would be exquisite in both of these views, especially this one with the more formal pleats. But I also think that it would work in the gourd skirt version. So I just think that fabric is beautiful and it's going to make up into something beautiful. It would be a gorgeous jacket, um, lots of different things. Our next fabric this is also another brocade kind of fabric. However, I think this fabric must have some rayon in it because this, as opposed to that, the peachy pink fabric has the traditional stiffness of a brocade. This fabric has a little more drama in its movement. And you know, I have not done burn tests on any of these fabrics, but this fabric, these fabrics came from a very careful seamstress. She has, now I don't know if they've been washed. I am certain that that one, that the pink one has not been washed. This one may have been washed. I can't tell. Um, it is so drapey and beautiful, but look, she surged all of her raw edges. This was a very careful seamstress. I have a lot of fabric that I got from her and it was very well taken care of, which encouraged me to buy a bunch of stuff um, because I felt like she had a good eye and she really took good care of her fabric. So this has like, this is more, that peachy one is more traditional, more, um, that fabric could, I mean, it could be 200 years old, it's not, but the design on it could be. This one is much more contemporary. This is a much more contemporary design. Now I would call this the back side and I would call this the front side. This is the much shinier side. But again, with any of these jackers or brocades, it's the seamstress gets to choose. What side do you want up? Now blue is one of my favorite colors and this kind of bright teal blue is gorgeous, but it's a little too energetic for me. I like to water it down until it's showing up like this, okay? So, you know, I like really watered down fabrics. This is a beautiful, vibrant, bright color with fantastic drape. This would work for both of the patterns I showed for the peach one, and I chose a couple of different ones. This would be awesome. You could choose another fabric to do your jacket. You could do this um, out of the dress or the jacket, it doesn't matter. This is Simplicity 1284, and I think every single one of these views you could make with that blue fabric, um, or the peach fabric, truthfully. Um, but this, this would be fantastic in them. And then here is Simplicity 1277. This I would make out of either of those fabrics. This skirt is gonna have a little more swing to it out of the blue, but um, this is a very structured dress and it would work beautifully with either of those fabrics. So that gives you an idea of the kind of things that I would pick up, the kind of patterns I would pick up to go with those fabrics. Now this last fabric, this is my favorite fabric. If I, if I had someplace fancy to go, I would sew with this fabric. Now. It's, it looks like a, a Dupiani or a Shen Tung, and it has, it's not quite as stiff as a taffeta, but it has a little bit of the rustle of taffeta, and it has that beautiful sheen of those three types of silk, and it has that, the slubs in it of a Dupiani or a Shen Tung. Um, I don't think it is silk. I have not done a burn test. But I just don't think it is. I think it's a acetate or a nylon or a polyester. I'm not sure. All I know is that it's beautiful. It is a beautiful fabric. So pretty. 
with those watercolored berries and that peach veering into orange in places. This is a, a peachy orange or rust. I, I just love this fabric. It's absolutely stunning. And the, the patterns that I chose to go with it, it looks like all I sew with is simplicity. That is not true, but that's what I seem to have grabbed for this um, showing. Is this not Simplicity 1459? It would be absolutely adorable in any of these views. And the skirt would be just perfect. You, you probably wouldn't, it would flare more than this. It would look more like this one without a crinoline. It would be, it would, it would have more sticky outies business, I think. It's just beautiful. It would look gorgeous in any of those views. And then also just a blouse, not a flowy blouse like the pussy bow blouse. It would totally not work for that. But this is McCall's 2094. I don't know if this one is still in print. I bought this. I think all my other, the other patterns I've shown you, I bought new, but I bought this one at a thrift store um, for 49 cents because I mean, talk about basics. And this fabric would be gorgeous in any of those. You could make the blouse out of this and then you could make a gorgeous white linen pencil skirt. Um, would be beautiful with that. Um, so you could make some structured culottes. Um, you could make this top and then some structured culottes um, in a white or if you wanted to pick up a darker version and of any of these in a in a bottom weight linen I think would be gorgeous um, clam diggers and this top um, with this fabric so I just think that this would be a good top for that so that is the first edition of Mayfield fabric and supplies vintage fabric showing. Um, as I said before, those fabrics are not especially old. I do have some that are 50, 60 years old that I will be showing you. And I also have so many gorgeous vintage patterns. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful, you guys, from the 40s and 50s. And those take a lot of work for me to bring to you because I have to open them all up and I have to count the pattern pieces and I have to compare it to the pattern and I have to make certain that I have everything. And it takes, it can take 15 minutes per pattern for me to do that because I'm treating them very gently and I'm trying to get them folded up precisely as they were. And then I'm making notes whether it's complete. I'm making notes about um, whether it's been cut or it's a new, in new uncut condition. And when, when I was doing this last, I do have five patterns ready to show. Um, I had to put one aside because it was a missing, it was missing one of the skirt pieces. And so I made the note of that and I put that one aside and I thought, you know, I could sell that one for lower because you could actually just manufacture, you could just build the skirt piece on this gorgeous dress. And then later down the line, I was working through another one and the skirt piece for the one before was in that one. And so it just takes time. And I was looking at it and I was like, wait a minute, this is the pattern piece for that other pattern. And so I got those two together and now they're all together in one little envelope where they're supposed to be with all of their siblings and ready to go as a complete pattern. I hope this video wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that someday I will have a piece of fabric at Mayfield Fabric and Supply that is just right for your project. Talk to you later. Are you filming or? Yeah.